So we're going to talk now about how to deal with merging when you have multiple people working on the same Unity project and potentially make changes to the same scene, and those changes wind up conflicting and having to be merged back together. So there's lots of information out there about how to do merging when you have standard programming languages, but things are different when you're dealing with the graphical sort of nature of scenes, and so we need a special tool for doing that. So what we're going to talk about in this video is how to install a tool called Unity YAML Merge, which is used for doing merging over scenes. So we've got two parts to this. We're going to end up in a demo, but first we're going to go through what are unfortunately a little bit hairy instructions for getting this all set up in the first place. So the first thing we need to do is to install a tool that allows us to do merging. And we're going to use a tool called kdiff3. And the reason we're going with this one is because I already pointed you at a LinkedIn learning video about how to do merging, and that's the tool they used, and so we may as well be consistent. One of the other advantages of kdiff3 is that it runs on both Windows and Mac, and so makes it easier for consistency. So how do you install that utility on your Mac? Um, well, the easiest way is to start out by installing something called Homebrew first, which is a package manager. So if you go to the Homebrew homepage to do the installation, we just copy this one-liner command, and we run it in a terminal window. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and do this installation because I already have this on my computer, but that's that's basically the process. Here, you just do that, hit return, and away it goes and does its own thing. Once this is successfully installed, then we can use brew to install this um, kdiff3, and that's the command that you type in, uh, and away it'll go and do its thing. Um, again, I'm not going to do this because it's already installed on my computer. Okay, so now that that merging tool is installed, we need to then configure source tree to be able to use this Unity YAML merge program. And to do this, we need to first figure out where Unity YAML merge actually is located on your computer. To do this, we go into Unity Hub, then click on Installs, then go to the install you're using. So we're using this 2020.3 uh, at this point. Hit on the gear icon and hit Reveal in Finder, and this pulls up the location of Unity. Now a little bit of magic. We have to go inside the Unity package, so right-click and do Show Package Contents, then click through into Contents, then into Tools, and that's where it lives. So here you can see Unity YAML Merge. So now we've found the location of that file. Now there's another file that's located here in this folder that's called merge specfile.txt. In that file, we have to tell Unity YAML Merge that it's going to be working together with this kdiff3 program that we just installed. That configuration, fortunately, I've already done for you, and I provided it as part of the template um, project that I gave you at the beginning of term, and you can find this by uh, clicking into your own project. So how do we do this? If we um, go into your project in source tree, then click on Show in Finder. That will give you what you need to be able to find those files. The Unity YAML merge files are in here. We're using a Mac, and we're going to use the merge spec file that came from the Mac. And all we need to do is copy from here, and then paste it into that target location, the Tools folder, by hitting Command-V. It asks us what to do, and we'll replace. All right, let's just take a quick look in there. We can see the key thing is going to be here, that um, when we're doing Unity stuff, we're going to be calling this kdiff3 program and the varit parameters, and that explains what's being done here. If you prefer to use a different merge tool, then you're welcome to. You'll just have to make the appropriate changes to this file, and now you know where it's located. Now, the next step is to configure source tree to be able to use these tools that we've just specified. And so we're going to go into Source Tree's Options, so Source Tree Preferences, and then within Preferences, we go into the Diff tab, and the ones we want to change are in here. So I've already done this, but the Visual Diff tool, we're going to set, there's a bunch of possibilities. We set to kdiff3, 
And that's all it's going to need to know to be able to find what we're doing. And then the next is to specify which merge tool we're using, and that's going to be Unity YAML merge. So we select custom, and then we select the path of that tool. Now, we could just type that in because the path is here. That's where it's located. Uh, but there's actually a little trick, um, which is a nice Mac specific trick that we can just click on the Unity YAML merge application and then drag it over here and it will fill in the correct command for us right there. Then the next part is to fill in the merge command and that's what that is. So merge dash p dollar base dollar remote dollar local dollar merged. And so that goes into that arguments field there. And that's it. That's all that's required to set this up to work with source tree. To just level this out, we're going to modify a very simple Unity application on two computers, which we'll call Granite and Crocodile. It's easy to tell the difference between these two because one is going to be a Mac and the other is going to be a Windows computer. So first, let's open up the application. And here it is open on our Mac Granite. So we can see it's a, there's nothing much to this, it's just a box and a sphere. So let's go ahead and make a modification on this one and we'll take the box and we'll move it forward a little bit and maybe we'll change the scale a little bit so that it's a bit more uh, rectangular than box-like. Okay, so that's the, that's the modification we're gonna make on Granat. So let's save this. And we'll quit out of it just to keep ourselves clean. Now we're going to flip over to our PC and we'll open up here. Of course, the change hasn't been made on this side because uh, it's a different computer. We didn't commit that change. We didn't pull it down. And so there's no reason why it would have been made. So what we're going to do is we're going to perform a different set of changes onto the box over here. So let's make the box a little bit higher. And I don't know, let's change it to still a box, um, but a bigger box. There we go. Okay, so we've got, ah, let's push it way over and make it look really different. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're gonna do the same deal here. We're going to save this. And we're gonna quit out. All right, so we've now got the problem that we've made two sets of changes on two different computers. Let's head back over to our Mac, Granette, and let's commit the changes here first. So we go through the usual business, we're gonna commit, we're gonna say, so Granette made the box into a big rectangle and we'll push these right on away back to the remote server. And there was no problem with doing this, of course, because Granette made the change first, made the commit first, and therefore is not aware of the changes that were made on Crocodile. Let's over, head over to Crocodile and um, we'll make a local commit first. And so Crocodile moved the box and made it bigger. And so we'll commit. And all is good there. Now, of course, the problem is that if we want to actually go ahead and push this, we're going to wind up conflicting with the change that was made um, from Granette. And so we're going to be defensive here and we're going to do the pull first. This will discover that the conflict was made because the version that is in the remote repository is going to have conflicting changes. So basically we made the box into the rectangle and here we tried to resize the box and move it and we can't do both of those things at once. So it informs us that we've got these merge conflicts. So let's go ahead and do the merge. We want to resolve conflicts and then launch the external merge tool. 
which will generate exactly what we're hoping for. It's found us the conflicts in terms of the position and scale. Now, here, this one, the base, that was the original version. And these were the original coordinates of that cube and its original scale is a size three by three by three um, cube. The local one are the changes we made where we continue to make it a cube, but a bit bigger and we changed the location. And then the remote one were the changes that were made on the Mac on Granite, where we made it into um, a rectangular like thing by making it much bigger along the X axis. And so here the idea is we have to choose which we want to go with. We can go with the original um, or either of the changes. We can't really merge these changes because they're just conflicting. But let's go ahead and go with the ones that are on the remote on C. So what we do is we go over to Merge Conflict, select lines from C, and we can go ahead and save, and then quit out. And that completes our merge. Now we can stage, commit, and note that the commit message is created for us. And then push back. And lo and behold, we're all done. And so here we can actually see what happened that the um, on Granette, we made the box into the big rectangle. And on Crocodile, we made the box uh, bigger and moved its location. And these are now parallel branches. And then the merge brought them back together. If we flip back to Granette, we'll find that we've got stuff to pull. And so we pull and this will give us back the merged version that now um, brings together those two changes and brings us back to being consistent again. Just for fun, let's take a look at that. And we can see that the change is what we would have expected, that we got that big rectangle because that was the version that we accepted. So that's all done. Now, a, kind of a word here is it's generally a good idea to try to avoid having to do these merges over a scene. In general, it's, it's going to work out better if you can agree among the team members who's going to be modifying a particular scene and, and allow that person to have the lock on that scene for that moment. Um, then you don't have to do the merging at all. Um, you can use your instant messenger client to decide who's going to be doing that and negotiate that way. But if you get into a situation where you have made multiple changes, then this approach is going to help out.